Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. There is no doubt that among the many forms of crisis our Muslim community is facing in America, one of them is identity crisis. And that is due to the powerful but un-Islamic environment. This is precisely one of the fundamental reasons why Imam Shamsi Ali established Nusantara Foundation in 2014. Since then, Nusantara has been undertaking a variety of initiatives to introduce Islam as a mercy to America and humanity. Since the beginning of 2018, Nusantara has taken a bold initiative to establish the first Islamic boarding school in America. A piece of 25-acre land has been acquired with several old buildings in the beautiful city of Moodis, Connecticut for this purpose. But Nusantara cannot do this noble project without Allah's help and your kind donation and participation. Please, do help and donate generously to Nusantara Foundation. For donations, kindly turn your eyes toward the TV screen. May Allah reward you all abundantly. وجزاكم الله خيرا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm Davira Charanisa Welcome back to Islamic in the West Challenges and Opportunity Series with Imam Samshali Now uh, I'm with Imam Samshali Assalamualaikum Imam Waalaikumsalam Ramadan Mubarak Imam Ramadan Kareem How are you today? Good, Alhamdulillah, I'm great Alhamdulillah, glad to hear that. So today we'll be continuing our discussions, Imam, about Islamophobia, especially in our faith dialogue. Mm -hmm. So um, in the society, in the society today, like there is misunderstanding, um, like some misunderstanding about like how Muslims should perceive the Jewish community, like how can we should establish our relationship with them? Yeah. Yes, um, between communities. Muslims and Christians, Muslims and Hindus, Muslims and Buddhists. There are a lot of misunderstanding. And yeah. I think that, uh, that is our responsibility to correct some of those misunderstanding. Um, for example, some Indonesian or Bangladeshi Muslims, they misunderstand about America. Look, America is evil. Mm. Looks, everything is about America is evil, right? That is in the mind of some. And that is our responsibility to correct. Mm. That yes, there are some evil things that America does. But at the same time, America is still a great land. It's a land of opportunity, um, a land of dreams for everybody to come and have a better life. Um, particularly when it comes to the issue of Jewish people. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, um, how you call it, conspiracy theories mm. in the minds of some Muslims that every evil in the world is being orchestrated by the Jewish people. Right. Any bad thing happened in the Muslim world, all because of those Jewish people. And that is a um, conspiracy theory the Muslims have. You know, I still remember when I was a student in Pakistan, you know, seven years I lived in mm. Pakistan, studied about Islam at the International Islamic University. And at that time, I, uh, I still found the war in Afghanistan against Soviet Union. You know, actually, uh, the Soviet, the Afghan Mujahideen were battling, fighting against Soviet Union hmm. for the interest of NATO, the Western power, America. Yeah. But in America and the West, the perception was built means Muslims love to kill. Right. Love to kill. Okay. And some people think, oh, you know, they are coming. The, and coming here means Western people are coming to the Muslim world to take over uh, the Muslim world. And behind the power, the Western power is the Jewish people. Hmm. Again, the Jewish people. So everything is about Jewish. Now, some Muslims also misunderstand the Jewish people and Christian also yeah. based on some verses of the Holy Quran. For example, I'd like to mention particularly two. There is an ayah in the Holy Quran says, Lan tarda ankal yahudu wa nasara hatta tattabi amillatahum. And the Jewish and the Christian people will never be pleased with you until you follow their religion, their millet. Now, because of this ayah, Muslims understand or misunderstand that those people don't like us. Hmm. Those, peop those people dislike us. Yep. Now, what happens if you live in America and you have a Jewish neighbor to your right, yep. a Christian neighbor to your left? What are you going to feel? So every day you feel that you're going to be being hated. You hate, they hate you. So you don't feel secure because there's enemies to, the, to your right and to the left. <laughs> That is absolutely a wrong understanding. Yeah. The meaning of this verse of the Quran, this ayah is, Allah reminds us that it is a challenge for the Muslim to make sure that those people will be pleased with you. So what you have to do? Make da'wah. 
Hmm. What is dakwah here? Show them that you are not the dangerous. Right. You are a nice person. You are a kind person. Because when you can do that, they will change their mind. So the ayah, the verse of the Quran is mostly for us, not about them, but for us. What we can do, what we have to do, what we must do right. in order to minimize the possibility of anger, the possibility of fear, the possibility of phobia by doing every possible way to minimize their, their fear. So that is a misunderstanding of the ayah. But in general, in nutshell, um, I would like to say that, yes, it's a lot of misunderstanding in our minds uh, that we need to change about others. Similarly also, them about us. Yeah. Because in order for us, in order for them to change, also we must change. Right. And also, you know, and that's why the Quran is very clear. Lita'arafu means to get to know one another. It is not only that they know us or we know them, but to know each other. So it means that we must change as we want them to change. As they see us as evil, dangerous, or violent, terrorists, then we have to change them as an, a source of evil too. You know, when the Jewish people, when I came to one of the synagogues, this is a, you know, a long time ago, um, I was invited to speak uh, to a synagogue here yeah. in New York City, a very prominent synagogue. And the schedule was very long time, long ago, a long before the time. Uh, four months. Yeah. But what happened just a day before the speech, uh, there was a terrorist attack happened in Paris, in London, in, 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 in France. And many Jewish people got killed. And the, the terrorists happened to be Algerian Muslims. Mm. So now I, I came to that synagogue and everybody basically was kind of worried. Mm. You know, this is a Muslim coming to our synagogue and yesterday just a Muslim killed a Jewish. And in, in Paris, what are they going to do? Right. And, and, but after the discussion, someone came to me uh, and he said, you know, before I, I know you, before I met you, yeah. I was thinking that all, all Muslims are killers, all Muslims wanted to kill the Jewish people. Because that is the, the, the perception, yeah. generally, in their minds, that Muslims hate them, right. and Muslims are here to kill them, to minimize them. Okay. And sometimes they use also hadith. There's a hadith mentioned that in the Day of Judgment, before the Day of Judgment, there is a special tree in the Middle East that say, okay, come, there is a Jewish hiding behind me. Mm. You know, even the tree say, there is a Jewish come and kill him. You know, this hadith is being misunderstood by some right. Muslims and also the Jewish people. So um, the point here that, you know, through interfaith dialogue, you know, discussion, uh, you know, interaction, engagement, uh, we were able to, to change a lot of things. Their minds change. They began to say, oh yes, Muslims are nice people, Muslims are kind people, Muslims are loving people. There are some individuals who make, who, who make evil around, but the majority of Muslims are nice people wanted to work with us, similarly with other communities as well. There are some Christians who kill Bosnians, the Serb Christians. There are some Hindus who kill Muslims in India, even right now. Um, if, uh, there are some Jewish kill Muslims, let's say, in Palestine. Yeah. But you know, not every uh, Jewish are bad. Not every Christian uh, uh, is bad. Not every Muslim is bad. There are good people that can work together to make a better world. Okay, Ustad. Um, so, basically, still about the interfaith dialogue. Um, as an imam, you have the opportunity to do like many interfaith dialogues mm -hmm. with the other community leaders. But how about we implement this for from like the small community, especially for the youths? Because you mm. say that these youths play an important role in regards sure. to like discussions mm. and you know like interfaith dialogues with the other maybe like youths as well. Interfaith dialogue covers everything. So mm. we have uh, interfaith dialogue among Jew among the youth. Yeah. Uh, for example, here in New York, we engage an interfaith dialogue with um, our JMC, Jamaica Muslim Center Youth, oh, okay. with uh, a Jewish group from a uh, th Jewish theological seminary. This is a kind right. of university near Columbia University. Right. So they came to our center, they have dialogue, and we have a discussion about Yusuf and Joseph. Ah, okay. So they have also Joseph, Joseph. in their book, and yeah. they have Yusuf in our Quran. So we talk about the concept of Yusuf in Islam and the concept of Joseph yeah. in Judaism. And then we invite Christian youth came to our center, and we bring our youth also to come to them and have engagement. You know, it is very important because they are the future. Right. Uh, but also we have an interfaith dialogue between women. Mm. Um, and uh, there, there is a, um, a special organization 
um, women organization work together, not talking, but they are cooking together. Right. So Jewish Muslims uh, dialogue, uh, Muslim women and Jewish women, they come together once in let's in a month or two months they're cooking together kosher food and halal food and hmm. they show how to cook halal ah, okay. and how to prepare kosher, kosher. food and uh, we have that dialogue too. and now we have also uh dialogue between students hmm. you know we have a s islamic school visiting jewish school we have a jewish school visiting islamic school and you know all all and all levels right now we have right. dialogue and there is uh, even an international movement in terms of jewish muslim dialogue right now and I began that in New York in 2017 uh, or 18. Um, we call Weekend of Twinnings. Mm. Twinning the mosque and synagogue. Bringing the mosque and synagogue together right. uh, for dialogue. And it has become an international. We begin in New York and then we expand to all America. And then it, it went to New Zealand, to Australia, mm. to South Africa, to Europe. Yep. Almost every country where we have Jews and Muslim together yeah. they have dialogue and that is because we initiated it from new york many, oh, right, many, many people don't know that but <laughs> we initiated it here from new york so it becomes an international movement you know the latest one just two years ago before the pandemic in fact three years ago before the pandemic we did uh, organize a jewish muslim dialogue in morocco mm. uh, this is the first time that moroccan muslims and jewish moroccans came together officially to have dialogue. They never did it before, but they have lived together for a long time. Right. But now they realize that we are Muslim, you are Jewish, now we have to be friends, and we initiated that in, in Morocco. A lot of things we do. So my point here that, uh, you know, we, ch we need to change, and uh, inshallah that will bring changes also in our community. Okay, mashallah. So actually, like right now, it's also like common among the youths here in, yes. in the U.S. That's right. And that's great to hear that it's also like spreading throughout the world, mm -hmm. uh, the internet dialects. Okay, Imam. So, can you share like tips to start this dialogue in the small community? For example, like in the neighborhood, how can we start this kind of like interfaith dialogue? No, normally when we start interfaith dialogue, it is not about talking. It's okay. not about discussion. Uh, for example, I have one of initiative, interfaith dialogue initiative, yeah. called Midnight Run. Midnight Run is an initiative to feed the homeless mm. in the se winter season. We prepare hot sandwich, coffee, and we bring out to the street, you know, with J Jewish U students and Muslim students. Right. We th both have identities. You know, we have our kopia, you mm. know, they have their kippah, they go out to the street, the, the Christian young, they have their cross, and we distribute food. Mm. And, and that actually it's a great thing to start yeah so if you want to start an interfaith dialogue think about some social working work together either it is food feeding homeless either it is the, you know open up a uh, pub, uh, public kitchen for the for the needy that's what we need to do jamaica muslim center for example here in queens organize a health fair mm. uh, uh, you know treating the community health you know uh, providing health you know uh, treatment to the community for free uh, by Muslim doctors and Jewish doctors right. and also Christian doc doctors. So there are a lot of things to start. And, and once again, it is about how to live together harmoniously yeah. without any conflict, without minimizing misunderstanding, no hatred, no animosity. Uh, but we keep our own identity as Muslims. Yeah. They keep their own identity as Jewish, but we can live together. That's what interfaith dialogue is about. So interfaith is not to convert anybody. Yeah. You know, when I come to the interfaith dialogue, my intention is not to convert the Jews to be Muslim or Christian to be Muslims. My intention is to talk about what Islam is all about. Right. When they wanted to become Muslim, that's their own. <laughs> I don't have anything to do with this between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. But my point is not conversion. Yeah. You know, so again, there are, there are great things to do in order to begin the interfaith dialogue. Okay, mashallah. So it's not only about the talks, it's not only about the discussions, yeah. but we can start through like the social works and then again showing an example of Islam through right. that interfaith. And that's right. You know, for example, in the um, uh, sisters in the universities, uh, you know, s occasion, sometime we got mm. resistance about hijab. And then the Muslim uh, sisters come together and they invite non-Muslim and they practice hijab. Mm. It's a part of interfaith dialogue too, showing them that wearing hijab is not difficult. Wearing hijab is not really, um, you know, taking away the freedom of the woman. Wearing hijab is, you know, this is a choice, but at the same time it's a model as well, fashion. Yeah. 
Okay, great to hear that, Imam. Right, so we'll be ending our discussions for today Amen. and then continuing sure. uh, for the next episodes. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching this today's episode. We'll be continuing tomorrow about other interviews and also Islamophobia uh, dialogues with Imam Samshi Ali. I'm Devira Charnisa. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. There is no doubt that among the many forms of crisis our Muslim community is facing in America, one of them is identity crisis. And that is due to the powerful but un-Islamic environment. This is precisely one of the fundamental reasons why Imam Shamsi Ali established Nusantara Foundation in 2014. Since then, Nusantara has been undertaking a variety of initiatives to introduce Islam as a mercy to America and humanity. Since the beginning of 2018, Nusantara has taken a bold initiative to establish the first Islamic boarding school in America. A piece of 25-acre land has been acquired with several old buildings in the beautiful city of Moodis, Connecticut for this purpose. But Nusantara cannot do this noble project without Allah's help and your kind donation and participation. Please, do help and donate generously to Nusantara Foundation. For donations, kindly turn your eyes toward the TV screen. May Allah reward you all abundantly. Which is Akum Allah